This is a sculptural table that uh, I carved from uh, two myrtle wood root sections that I joined together. Uh, the first, first part was a root section with a partial tree trunk that uh, goes down, and then this was just a root section that I joined to it that forms the legs and base. And so it's upside down from the way it grew. This area right here, there actually was a flawed area in it, which I was able to incorporate into the design. I like to add areas that are shaped in the middle of these sculptural tables uh, by having different levels and shapes that uh, emphasize that it's a sculpture. It becomes not only a functional item, but also uh, really functions totally as a sculpture. One of the ideas when I title these pieces, such as this piece titled uh, Marbled Merlets, it's just to give you as the viewer uh, a window into how I'm thinking about it. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about merlets? Oh, what, are, what are they exactly? Oh, uh, merlets are uh, birds that uh, live in the Pacific Northwest and they uh, nest high up in uh, the redwood trees and fir trees that grow along the coast. This is a sculptural table that I titled Guardians, and I have done a series in the past of single guardians, and this was uh, quite a bit like the freestanding sculptures that I did. This piece uh, is carved out of the trunk of a myrtlewood tree and the root section of another myrtlewood tree. What I did with this piece <clears throat> in order to join the two was I slabbed this quite thick and then I left these areas that came down so that I could through bolt. It's a functional piece that can be used as a table and I make an attempt to have each surface parallel with the floor and parallel with one another and flat so they actually can be used. You can set a glass of wine on it. What I've changed to the last few years is a surface that is chiseled and you can see just as clearly the uh, changes in color, the burl, the uh, grain patterns, but the addition is that you can really feel what the wood feels like. It's so tactile by having this chiseled surface. I do leave the lines so that they're very defined because I get more movement in the piece. They're not that different than some of your other pieces you've made that go on walls, go on stands. Right, the idea is that these function just like the freestanding sculptures that I have on stands and the wall sculptures that, like this piece that's uh, almost six feet long and comprised of three pieces that fit together. It came from one large root section that was probably 3,000 pounds that I collected from the beach. So it's the same thing. These are just functional. They're all functional in my mind because they're visually functional, but this mm -hmm. you can actually use. When I carve a sculptural shape for a tabletop, the creative thought process that has to happen so that this sculptural form that's under here is part of this sculptural form, which is actually functional. This piece started out as one large myrtlewood root mass that was 3,000 pounds. And I wanted to be able to carve one large table out of it without adding anything to it. So I decided to split the uh, root mass in half with my chainsaw and then butterfly it. And I needed to leave a join area, which is about eight, eight inches deep. And it is through this, this line right here, the two pieces that have been butterflied together. What came out of it was what looks like a swallowtail butterfly, so I titled the piece Swallowtail. One of the things that I needed to accomplish with this was this deep area that is the join that I through bolted and glued together. I needed to incorporate that into the designs and by having this deep area I was able to uh, incorporate it into the edge so that you really get a lot more movement because you get so much variation in the thickness of the edge. There's a lot of variety in color, like it's quite light over here and then darker. There's so much variation from uh, this chatoyancy that you get from foxtailing, the burl. Uh, you get this natural uh, color change that goes to a dark uh, chocolatey brown to uh, where it, the tree trunk grew out of the soil is a, a much lighter golden brown color. Uh, and then you get areas that are very interesting like this that is actually the heart of the tree. This is the first year of growth. 
where it began growing. And this dark area often occurs in heart, tra heart crack. It actually is almost a purplish color. Mm -hmm. And so it just represents how this organism grew in its life process. I work intuitively and I don't really have any idea uh, what the piece will end up being except that it'll be a uh, representation of what my interests have been through my life. So those titles actually are really just a bridge or a window for the viewer to see how I'm thinking. Well, they're really quite abstract pieces. They're, they're very abstract. They just really uh, remind, remind me of things that I've seen uh, in my past in nature. You see this finished piece and then I'm going to show you how I've arrived at that finished piece by collecting the wood uh, from the beach and then the carving process, some of the joinery that happens, and the thought process that goes into how you create a sculptural table that's functional.